This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Phenomenal slates across both the NBA and the NHL for tonight. Eight games in the NBA, 12 in the NHL. We're going to break down both of those here today, talking to Tom Vecchio and identifying where he sees value for both the NBA and NHL over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here, as mentioned by Tom Vecchio. Check him out on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one find his work every weekday on the daily iso talking nba props and dfs tom welcome on in today how you doing i'm doing good yeah it's super busy uh not only just today but overall this time of year um a lot of a lot of tough games tonight i would say in both nba and nhl not in terms of it's like difficult to find but like the 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 favorites are so clear that the lines are spot on. So it's like we can't be going to too many money lines. We can't be going to too many spreads. I'll talk about that when it comes to some things in the NBA. Uh, But I think it really should be an exciting slate, uh, slate tonight for both sports. Well, if the sides and totals are efficient, that's why we have props. And we'll talk about some player props that Tom likes. For both the NBA and NHL, we'll talk about the national TV games for both those sports as well to get you ready for a fun viewing slate for tonight. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. We broke down the NFL Combine with Eric Froton of NBC Sports getting his read on some Combine prop bets that he likes at FanDuel Sportsbook based on 40 times and stuff like that. Eric is live in Indy right now, so so check that out on the Covering the Spread podcast feed. You can also find it on FanDuel TV Plus and the FanDuel YouTube page. If you like what you hear, make sure you're subscribed. Leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your bet wins. You can bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props and more just visit the FanDuel app and shoot your shot FanDuel official sportsbook partner of the NBA must be 21 plus and present in select states first online real money wager only $10 first deposit required bonus issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, and Vermont. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9 with in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org. Or call 800 327 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts. Or call 1 877 Hope and Y or text Hope and Y in New York. Tom, let's kick things off by talking about the NBA. Two TNT games for tonight the Warriors and the Knicks and the Heat and the Nuggets. A uh, couple of, I believe, no sweat, same game parlays available for those over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Let's begin things with the Warriors and the Knicks. Any value you see in that game for tonight? Yeah, that starts off with Steph Curry over four and a half assists. It is sitting at minus 140, which is, you know, could be a little bit of juice for some people, but we still want to be identifying good spots. And, you know, he's been super consistent. Looking back at his game log, 6, 4, 5, 8, uh, 8, 10, 5, 10, 6 assists. So he's getting there on a a pretty, pretty regular basis. And when I'm seeing minus 140, I'm looking at this as a consistent bet. This is something just to... You know, I like to look at some bets. It's like, we're, we're going to build the bankroll here. We're going to keep things consistent. We're going to be constantly trending upwards. And Curry getting there is what we should be seeing in this type of game. Now, the big note for this game is that Jalen Brunson is listed as questionable. As I said on the podcast today, Jalen Brunson is the engine for the Knicks right now. And when he missed their most recent game, like, they just looked flat. Because Julius Randle is still out. OG Ananobi is still out. They just don't have that push on offense. I'm expecting him to be back 
which should elevate the game environment overall, just because they're going to have more scoring. And that provides this back and forth action, which we should be seeing. And Curry has been so consistent at this, even with changes in their starting lineup, Chris Paul coming back, Clay Thompson going to the bench, Curry's still finding a way to get there. And ultimately, the Knicks, while they play slow, they have been a little bit lackluster on defense. You mentioned uh, the consistency with Curry, and I think that's a desirable thing. I mentioned before the no sweat same game parlay available for the TNT games, and you want legs that will hit, obviously. Right. And you want to find some correlation in there. So if you kind of assume good game environment with Brunson likely playing here, uh, that did shift to plus or to minus one thirty eight on the Curry uh, over four and a half assists, so slightly better number there now as well. But you want legs that are going to hit and correlate well. So if you assume a good game environment, that benefits Steph from an assist perspective, and it's also a leg that where you show value even at a pretty decent number at minus one thirty eight now. Yeah, I'm on board with it. Like I said, I'm. I'm willing to go to some of these lines that I, based on good projections, good consistency, we roll in the game environment, a little bit of matchup. I'm just going to, I'm going to roll with it, you know, more times than not, uh, more times than not at four and a half, a relatively low number for Curry. And it did go back to 140. So uh, people were, were biting once it got to 138. So Curry over four and a half assists, minus 140 for the Warriors and the Knicks. Now back to minus 138. I'm just going to close that page so it stops updating <laughs> on me on the fly. As mentioned, the other game for tonight is the Heat and the Nuggets. Heat are always a kind of a tough team to figure out uh, from a player availability perspective. So anything stand out to you in this game, Tom? Uh, well, there, I'm pretty sure there's basically no player props posted as of now. I think it's just Bam out of bio between the two teams that has any props posted. The note after last night's game for the Nuggets is that uh, Jamal Murray is uncertain for today. So right from the and the, the Nuggets had a super solid game last night. I mean, I'm expecting Jokic to fully play, whether Murray plays or not, to be determined. So when it comes to Nuggets props, since there are none posted right now, I think Jokic's lines are going to be super spot on. I also think they're going to be extremely heavily bet if we do see Murray out. But Aaron Gordon, that's a player I would have my eye on if we do see him, uh, if we do see Murray out of the lineup. So nothing posted as of, as of yet. It's a wait and see for this game. Do I expect a massive amount of points from this one? Probably not. It's a rematch of the finals last year. We know that he plays super slow. They play solid on defense. The Nuggets can also step up their defense. They also defend home court well at altitude, like all these things. So I'm not expecting a massive outburst of scoring, but Gordon can still play a solid role if Murray is out. So let's assume that um, that Murray is out. In which market would Gordon benefit most from that absence? It's probably just points. Okay. Um, you know, he does a consistent job rebounding the ball, but – it would probably just be points as of now. And I don't know what the line would be posted. I have to look at like his rolling average and all those, those types of things, but probably nothing higher than the mid teens. Okay. Somewhere around there, maybe pushing it to 17, but probably not too much more than that. And the same thing can be said about Michael Porter jr. If you just have, if you just personally think MPJ is a better player than Gordon kind of just roll with the same thing. Murray's out of the lineup. There's going to be extra usage there. Okay, so dig into the Aaron Gordon points prop, maybe MPJ as well, if Murray is ruled out. Of course, as Tom mentioned, no props posted as of yet for the Heat and the Nuggets. We got a lot of other games across tonight, though, Tom. Six other games in the NBA for tonight. Where else do you see value from a player prop perspective? Let's go to the Nets hosting the Hawks. The uh, Jalen Johnson for the Atlanta Hawks, over 16.5 points. It's sitting at minus 120. I've spoken heavily about Jalen Johnson uh, from a fantasy perspective this year, he's having a really, really solid year. Uh, Trey Young is now out of the lineup for the Hawks for an extended period of time with this uh, finger surgery. And Johnson has been consistent to this point in the season. And now he has the chance to see an elevated role in offense because Trey Young is out. As a Nets fan, I can tell you the Nets are horrible. They play absolutely no defense, but Atlanta also plays no defense. So at the top, I kind of mentioned that like tonight's tonight's slate is really tough when it comes to sides and totals. I like I, I would have interest in the Hawks at plus one and a half just because the Nets have been absolutely terrible. But at times on this podcast, I've also mentioned that the right. Hawks are terrible against the spread. So we have these two teams that just don't play defense. They can score. But when it comes to solely based on opportunity, Johnson is this player to step up. And I, I legitimately think Johnson can push towards a, a double double for points and rebounds every single night. So I, I spoke about him on the daily ISO about some prop bets. I mentioned his points plus rebounds prop which is fine but i simply prefer the 16 and a half points prop because we're seeing some elevated field goal attempts with trey young out of the lineup 
Right now, that number is minus 122, so slightly uh, slightly more than what it was when you were looking before. 16 and a half, minus 122, but it sounds like that's likely still a good number for you with Jalen Johnson, given the game environment here for Hawks and Nets. Any other player props you like across FanDuel Sportsbook for the NBA tonight? Yeah, just one other, and that's with Kevin Durant over six and a half rebounds for the Suns taking on the Rockets. Big over under, love to see that. Durant piling up the rebounds as of late. There was also an article about him yesterday, the day before, that like he's committing to like you know picking up more blocks or a little bit more defense or like just tweaking his game a little bit, which you know you want to see as a veteran player, especially with championship aspirations, just do a little bit more. Looking back at his game log for rebounds. 5, 11, 6, 6, 11, 10, 8, 10. So he's getting there almost every single night. And if he's you know getting there to 5 or 6, that's obviously super close. Hopefully a back and forth game will take that with a high over under. But if he's not getting there, he's pushing past it. He's never falling like way, way below it. So again, kind of with the Curry thing, like we're getting like a high level of consistency also with pretty high upside. So him getting to 10 rebounds like isn't a shock, especially with this like, kind of new mindset that he's bringing to the game, which I love to see. Now, as you mentioned, the number four Durant is at over six and a half minus 115. Given the volatility in his recent game logs, did you consider alt markets with Durant? Or do you think this is just the best way to go, given that altered mentality that Durant seems to have right now? I would take it to eight. I probably wouldn't take it to 10. Okay. I think plus 145, that's fair. But okay. at 10, what what is, what's 10 if you can jump to that he is plus 350 for 10 plus yeah that's that's probably a bit too much yeah 22.2 percent implied odds there right i would i would take eight i would do a a unit on durant and then like a a unit on six and a half and then like i I don't know half unit on eight plus something okay so the eight plus as you mentioned is plus 145 the baseline market for durant six and a half is minus 115 for tonight that is the suns versus the rockets Let's talk some NHL now for tonight, Tom. Huge. 12-game slate, one of which uh, game is on ESPN. (laughs) Might be a bloodbath. we got the Avalanche and the Blackhawks on ESPN for tonight. Let's begin with that game. Anything stand out to you for that one? Like you said, this game is uh, pretty lopsided when a road team is minus 315. (laughs) So you can't bet. I mean, I wouldn't bet them on the money line. You can't even bet them the 60-minute line to win in regulation. In theory... The only spot to go would be their puck line at minus one and a half, sitting at minus 125, because if they're this heavy of favorites, they should be scoring a ton. I have no interest in any of these numbers. Do I expect the Avalanche to win? Yes. Do I want to be going there? No. Do I want to be going to a player prop? Yes. And that is for not Nathan McKinnon, who I normally go to. I'm going to his line mate, Miko Rantanen, for over three and a half shots on goal, sitting at minus 114, or was just a little while ago. As I've continuously said about the Blackhawks, whether we're looking at them from a two-week sample size, a month sample size, the entire season sample size, they're constantly sitting in the bottom five or bottom seven of the league for total shot attempts allowed per 60 minutes in 5v5 situations. Ranton is on the first forward line alongside McKinnon and the first power play. He plays a great role in the first power play opposite McKinnon, so he's often left with a lot of space because... Just the way they move things on the power play goes from McKinnon to Kale McCarr, the defender at the top of the point, back to McKinnon to McCarr, and Ranton has opened one timer. So he is routinely left with a lot of space and time. He's a high volume shooter, and it's Chicago. I will take great offenses against Chicago time and time again. When you're looking at a, a mismatch like this, where one team is very obviously better than the other, which we get here with the Avalanche and the Blackhawks, do you consider, do you give more consideration to the more aggressive markets? Like this is a process based market, the shop right. prop, goal scoring props and stuff like that. Those are the more volatile ones. Correct. Do you give more thought to those when it is a mismatch like this? Or do you just want the raw shot volume and not leaving yourself subject to the results once the puck leaves the stick? <sighs> I think it depends on how you want to play. And it dep- and honestly comes down to individual, like your ability to take on risk sure. like as an individual better, like what's your openness to risk. So if you look at the goal, the goal score market, McKinnon's at minus minus one thirty. Rantanen is at minus minus one ten, which right. is I- insane for, for a goal market. The right. only way to play it in my mind would be because of this mismatch and there's obviously a high upside for both of them, it would be for two plus goals at yeah. like a quarter unit. 
Yeah. Because that's the only way to actually take advantage of this insane mismatch as minus 315 road favorites combined with a bad defense, combined with McKinnon, who's one of the favorites to win the MVP. So him putting up multiple points is probably going to happen tonight, and the points market is not yet posted. So the I issue would with the Ranton and two plus goals, it's five to one. Like you're not right. even getting that big of a discount in going to the more aggressive market. Right. So that's why you have to, that's the only way to play it. You would have to play it at a super, super low quarter unit, tenth of a unit, whatever you want to do, just because yeah. you're it's just so crazy that they're this heavy favorites with the goal odds being at minus one ten. For me personally, I'm taking the over three and a half shots, uh, minus right. one fourteen versus the goal at minus one ten, or the two plus goals at five to one for Rantanen. That is for the Avalanche and the Blackhawks on ESPN for tonight. Eleven other games across the slate. Uh, looking at money lines, totals, puck lines. Where else is seeing value there tonight? So this is, as I said, also a very very tough slate. If you just scroll through quickly, like there are outside of like some of these really close games, like. Wild Predators, that's it's literally mo- both minus 110. We can't be betting that. We have Boston, Vegas, super close. Carolina is a super heavy road favor. We can't be going to any of these games. Same thing with the Panthers. The, the spot that I think offers the most value is with Tampa Bay at home, not their money line, but the 60-minute line to win in regulation at minus 110. So they are favorites at home, which we will take that as obviously facts just against the Sabres. Minus 160 is a little bit too much to lay. If it was minus 150 or, or minus 140, I would play the money line for Tampa at minus 140. I wouldn't play it at, at, at minus 160 just because a little bit of inconsistency. But the three-way money line offers the most value against the Sabres team, who is better on defense this year, as I mentioned at the beginning of the season, but their offense is actually significantly worse, which is a, a bit of a surprise to me. So Tampa can still score the best in the league. Their defense has been lackluster, but against an offense that is, I guess, decreased from last year, the 60-minute line presents a combination of value and probability in my mind. Okay, so that is the Tampa Bay money line in minus 110. As Tom mentioned, Tampa Bay, sorry, the 60-minute money line, minus 110. Do check out the baseline money line, though, because as Tom mentioned, there are some situations in which he could see value in that number if it were not minus 164. So check out that number before you decide to bet it. But then if it's around minus 164 as it is right now at FanDuel Sportsbook, that's where Tom turns to the 60-minute money line, which is minus 110 for them to beat the Sabres in regulation. Let's talk some player props. Where else is seeing value for tonight? Uh, as I said, so many of these games are lopsided, which means that we're, if you look at any of these games that are super heavy favorites, their goal, the players for goals are the same thing as we see with the Avalanche, where we're, we don't want to be going to minus 110. We don't even want to be going to plus 110 for some of these players. So going to player I spoke about just a week, week and a half ago, Austin Matthews for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Over four and a half shots on goal, sending a minus 102, going up against the Arizona Coyotes. Coyotes are on a 13-game losing streak. Coyotes started off the year strong. That has obviously changed. (laughs) Matthews is, as we know, an extremely high-volume shooter. He can put up goals with the best of them. If you look at his goal odds quickly, uh, they're sitting at, what is it, minus minus 120, minus 130, minus 130. Same situation as we saw with uh, the abs. 41 for a hat trick. (laughs) He's been known to do it. (laughs) However, when we look to Matthews, obviously his shots are immense. And this is actually one of the spots that I would look to ladder Matthews. Looking back at his most recent game against Vegas, two shots there, four against Colorado, six against Vegas, four against Arizona just last week. But he is routinely a player that can push to six, seven, eight shots. So four and a half is obviously the most consistent. But seeing six plus is not a shock out of Matthews. And especially if he's, you know, with all these goals. So I would play a full unit on four and a half, half unit on six, quarter unit on seven plus, because it is a very realistic outcome for Matthews. Those numbers for Matthews, the baseline market, four and a half is minus 102. Uh, The six plus shot market is plus 185. The seven plus shots is plus 370. Right now at FanDuel Sportsbook and just checking out of curiosity, eight plus is seven to one. So I... Tom omitted that one. I probably would do, Um, you know, not knowing a lot, but I think I would go uh, with just those three that Tom alluded to there. Is the MVP a big enough motivator to, to, is that kind of help spur this outburst that he's had? Because it feels like ever since you talked about him 
to win the heart, it seems like he's just gone bananas. Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. Like, what is his, his motivation factor? Obviously, there's – the Maple Leafs have a lot of storylines always going on because they're an immense market. There's a ton of pressure for them to win. They constantly get to the playoffs, but they can't push past the second round. I mean, last year they got past the second round for the first time in whatever it was, 20 years. So there's just an immense amount of pressure. And he's won the MVP before uh, two years ago, three years ago, whenever it was. So, like, he's done it before, but doing it with 70-plus – I think is a different level. So the extra motivation factor, I think does play a part and they have a chance and they're like, not that they're not too, too far ahead in the standing. So they actually do need to continue to win. So is the motive, is the MVP a motivation factor? I would say yes, but yeah. you can't bet him to an MVP. It's just like a goal by goal base or day by day basis for multiple goals because minus minus one thirty for a goal is not something that I'm doing. Yeah, and he's been on a prolific clip right now. So, uh, but if you take the shot props, you're not subject to the variance of whether or not the shot goes in. So Matthews over four and a half sh- four and a half shots minus one oh two six plus shots plus one eighty five seven plus shots plus three seventy a ladder situation for Tom to take advantage of the fact that Matthews is on a heater from a volume perspective right now. That is Tom Vecchio. Make sure you check him out on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one. If you want some more thoughts on the NBA for tonight, check out the daily ISO by searching for FanDuel research podcast. Get that every weekday there and on FanDuel TV plus Tom. I appreciate the time as always enjoy a fun slate for both for tonight. We'll talk to you once again soon. Yep, Thanks for having me. All right, find Tom on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. I am on Twitter at Jim Saunas. You can check me out on threads at Jim.Saunas and find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Back once again tomorrow, talking some EPL with Austin Cass and some NASCAR in Las Vegas. We'll talk to you all you then. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 